So how can you prevent sabotage, for example, for in facilities like Soweto's Chris Hani Parakwanath, and uh, there should be security in CCTV cameras, for example. Let's discuss this now with senior forensic investigator at Biz Tracers, Calvin Rafadi. Calvin, good afternoon. Welcome. Afternoon. Thanks for coming through to our studios here. Thank you. In, in Johannesburg, we appreciate your time. Yes. Uh, just before Christmas, you're making yourself available. Yes. Uh, 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 this Chris Hani Parakwanath incident, from what you are hearing now from the o officials themselves, they say it's sabotage, that somebody knew exactly where to go and how to access that particular area where they got the copper, the copper cable. I mean, there should be some security measures in place like CCTV cameras or there should be a guard of sorts. Yes, yes, indeed, Braden. Uh, what normally happens in incidents of this type of nature of sabotage? We've seen it even in ESCO, even in Transnet and Prasa, where you get so much of copper being cut. But there are two scenarios to such crimes, whereby you get the contractor who's contracted to, to install this particular uh, uh, copper, of which they will know the environment. And uh, normally what happens is, Brady, if they install, let's say, a 20 meters of a copper, and at night they come back and cut maybe 10, you can't come and procure another 10 and join it. It's impossible. You have to procure again the whole the whole uh, 20 meters. So it's more like it's a procurement driven type of a crime whereby people want to make extra money. Then you get uh, the outsiders that will be having information on which area to go and tamper with this particular coppers or even steal the copper itself. Yeah, now Kelvin, uh, you've been involved, for example, with the, with the ESCOM one. I mean, the latest one we're seeing about sabotage, somebody cutting a copper, copper pipe is, uh, uh, that supplies the ICU of a hospital is the Chris Paraguana. But just two days ago, uh, Minister Pravin Gordon, being interviewed by Sally Badet, my colleague, with a phone, was showing another cables being cut at a local power station. So it's an ongoing thing. I mean, what can be done? Yeah, look, brother, uh, we, we had a chance to do the security risk assessment the time when the president made a U-turn into Tuka Power Station uh, from his trip, I think it was in 2019, the first day, uh, stage six, when they announced sabotage. Now, basically, what we, what we found out, under some of the, the, the towers, these people, they go either on, 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 on to cut this particular uh, copper, copper cables or go to a voltage yard and cut it as raw as it is. Now, the, the coppers normally, they will be having a sticker of that will resemble that it's, it's of ESCO. So they overnight, they go at the back of the yard, they peel it off, they peel off uh, all the markings of uh, this particular coppers of ESCO. Then during the day, they can use a cutting torch and get it out of the yard. So we recommended, because in the old days, the very same power stations, they used to have dog kennels of which that time, uh, the dogs could patrol inside the, 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 the power station itself. So we recommended that renovate these uh, dog kennels, let there be patrols of this particular, uh, uh, what you call, of this particular incidents and, and dogs, because they can even sense if somebody's even far away from... And this, of course, will, from, be, will be well-trained dogs. Yes, they, they've got specialized dogs. Uh, you, you know, even in the police, you get your well-trained dogs and even uh, domestic dogs uh, with the security personnel. Some of them, they patrol with these trained dogs. Uh, no, or, even along at airports, they use dogs to sniff out stuff. So dogs can be used. So you made, exactly the, my point. You yes. made the recommendation way back at, yes. for Tutuga in 2019. That's yes. one of the things that could be done to minimize or mitigate the risk of sabotage. And has that been implemented from your knowledge? No, no, it hasn't uh, because of uh, the, there were politics on how I was procured. But, you know, with ESCOM, they find every excuse to not to implement or not to action. Because part of why I recommended the dogs is because that portion where they go and peel off this particular copper, it's a wetland. So for any human to go and, and go across that, uh, 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 that field, it becomes so difficult. But with the dogs, it's easy for them to go across. Yeah, and that's just one of the recommendations. But I don't know, what, what, what would you suggest, for example, from your experience? How could a place like uh, a hospital mitigate this? I mean, the power stations, as you've said, like ESCOM, have got these open fields where if you had dogs, at least those will dissuade any, any attempted uh, uh, robbery of the copper cables there at a power station. Yes. You see, I agree when, uh, with the other previous uh, 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 callers or the, the interviews, whereby they say in this particular hospital, which is obviously the biggest hospital actually in, in Africa, uh, 
the securities, they have to be held responsible because of they've got CCTV cameras. Why were they not? Why were they not uh, in, in, in operation? And you see the tendency also of, of fighting for contracts of security. It also amounts to some incidents where you get this particular sabotage. Because other securities, they sabotage one another so that their contracts can be reviewed. But also, like I said, this procurement, it could be procurement driven. But the most thing, the, the uh, uh, recommendation they can do, they must put up cameras which will be having a eye cloud to record. So that even when electricity trips off, they've got a night vision, they can record on, 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 on eye cloud. So that even when somebody can take the server, they, it sits somewhere on the eye cloud. That's, that will be part of our recommendation. And in the procurement system, you know, when you don't want to come back empty-handed, we as forensic investigators, what we normally recommend, take all the stuff, computers, take it for downloading and even deleted items, and you won't come back empty-handed, and that's what we normally do. So is there is a challenge, uh, or part of the solution, rather, uh, in uh, uh, changing the procurement setup uh, from, your, from, 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 from what you had just said there? Should, should these institutions, like the hospitals, for example, in terms of security, uh, to prevent sabotage, look very closely at the, at the security contracts as well? Yes, they should look closely to the security contract. I agree with that. And also, they must jump into procurement. And uh, also, like uh, uh, crime intelligence, because this is a national key point, it has to come and be on the ground and, and, and find out, actually, because they've got the resources. Like, uh, you know, in, 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 even when there's a murder, because now there's someone who passed on in this particular hospital, we've got what we call a, a, a cell phone, cell phone um, a dumps. They can actually see which phones were in the area. Because another tool that these particular people they use in communication, it's, it's by way of cell phone. It can also help when, when the police can come and look at who were in that particular uh, area upon that incident and then analyze, minimize those people and they must come for questioning. Kelvin, I want to ask you a general question as a senior forensic investigator who in 2019, for example, was involved with the Tutuka uh, uh, power station where there were issues of cable theft and stuff like that. Are we losing, is the country losing the battle against these kinds of sabotage? Because this is beginning to be looking very, very serious. If a member of a community can go and, uh, and sabotage in a hospital's ICU, leading to one of the patients later dying and, and others having to be evacuated and taken elsewhere, you, you've mentioned Tutuka, and we still have stage six, stage five, whatever stage of, of, of power cuts, and every other day there's a breakdown. Are we losing the battle? Do you think there's a serious enough attention to make sure there is proper risk mitigation and to prevent sabotage yeah I, I think at this stage we are losing and uh, one has to be careful like uh, I've heard uh, the other gentlemen on TV saying no this is bringing up the war those those are more like vigilantes one has to be careful uh, to wait for for the investigation to unfold before one can even make make reckless statements like uh, this could be a war into some of the citizens because let's say now you you catch a wrong person and some people they can even pressurize that person and say no it's the one that stole the copper and people can kill one another so this we want to avoid vigilante as much as possible but at the same time the worrying fact about this issue it's the same pattern let's say now most hospitals are exempted but then and you know i've been in hospital for like six months in a coma you know if you have to go to, through the operation and they don't have clean sheets guess what they, they can operate you and if let's say escom says they they exempt some of the hospitals but the laundry of those particular uh, 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 sheets it's somewhere else like we've seen in pretoria they've got a laundry mat of all the hospitals in rosalie in the last time i checked so let's say they they are not exempted from load shedding so it affects also the productivity of the hospital so we need what i'm saying is we need to change some of the clause even in terms of precious metal issues close up this uh, uh, scrap metals and also check on the procurement system so that we don't get this uh, uh, what you call the side hassle of co other contractors to deal with this matter. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. That's a senior forensic investigator at Biz Tracers, Calvin Rafa.